Hey, Mel. Hey, Scarlett. Hey, Rita. <laughs> I don't know if it tells me everybody that hops on, but I know it tells me when my friends hop on. <laughs> so I'm hoping I have this set to public. We'll see if I did it right. Hey, guys. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Natalie. Hey, Shauna. Oh, my goodness. Hey, Archeroni. <laughs> hey, I'm so excited. You guys are like all here and ready to go. I'm gonna give it a couple minutes. I'm gonna try to start around 10.05. Y'all might have to tell me when that is though because I can't see the time when I'm live, which is weird. Let me see. Hey, Layla. Oh, nope, it will not tell me the time. No, no. I might, I might occasionally have to have y'all like give me a time check to make sure that we're like, staying on track. Hey, Jackson. Hey, Karen. Sorry if I miss anybody hopping on. Sometimes when people get on fast enough, it doesn't, doesn't tell me everybody. So I figured out how to turn the camera around for y'all. So you can like, you can see what my shirt says. And when I hold stuff up, you'll be able to see it. I'm very excited. Although it might throw me off. Like I might lean the wrong way because it's, backwards for me like I'm leaning to the left but on my screen I'm leaning to the right hey Alice hey Casey hey Aunt Denise Carson and Cora hi hey Jennifer hey Yolanda Meredith's Mer uh, Miss Canavan oh don't let my kids hear me call you by your first name <sighs> trying to I'm trying to like make sure I say hi to all of you guys Hi, Katie. I have a Hannah too. That's my oldest. Hi, Olivia. Hi, Trishon. Let me know if I'm saying that wrong. Just, I think that's right. Emerson, hi. Y'all, there's butterflies flying around out here. I'm up at the school. I'm super excited. Hi, David. There is a, there is a Palamede swallowtail that is like, zooming all around me. I feel like they're teasing me. That's one of the two swallowtails that are local here that I have not gotten to raise yet. So I'm like, hey. <laughs> hey, Wendy. So I put my contacts in so I don't have to like squint for y'all. You're welcome. I am super excited that you guys all want to learn about butterflies. Hi, Nico. Hi, Molly. I'm so excited. There's gonna be, this is gonna be really fun, guys. I do butterfly classes quite often, and I was pretty bummed about all the ones that I had to cancel for our school district. Hey, Hazel and Logan. Hi, Penny. I hope you guys are excited to learn about butterflies. I should have brought a ponytail. I'm regretting that choice. Like I'm, I was looking through earlier, I think I might have a rubber band. I might have to do if things get, you know, too bad. It's a little windy, and it's a little overcast, um, and there's an airplane, so we might have to, like, you know, pause for uh, passing uh, loud noises. Hi, Gabby. Hey, Andrea. Oh, 10.05. Thank you, Shauna. Hi, Jace. <laughs> I'm so excited, you guys. There's so many of y'all. I'm excited. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to get rolling and I'm going to introduce myself. Um, some of you guys already know me. I'm sorry. You have to hear it again. Um, is it Dania and Alec? Dania, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. I'm really bad at name pronunciation, guys. You can totally correct me and I will not, I will not be offended. <laughs> Dania. Dania? It's a pretty name though, either way. Hi, Erin. Oh, I'm so excited, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna introduce myself. If we're already friends and you already know this, this little story, then I guess you have time to like go get some popcorn. Um, 
All right, so I raise butterflies, which is, I know, a super weird hobby, right? Like it's totally fine if you think it's a weird hobby, it's a weird hobby. Um, about five years ago, my kids and I got a painted lady in a little kit from my sister-in-law. It was actually just like a little leftover one. Hey, Penny and Gordo and Reese and Ryder. Um, Carson, hi. Oh, for Miss Canavan's class, hey. I'm sitting here at your school, Carson. You see all the signs? You see all the blue bonnets back there? If y'all look closely, you might see this, these butterflies that are bopping around. I've already seen a couple today. So five years ago, we got our little painted lady. And if you've ever raised from like a little tiny kit, painted ladies just come in a little cup and they have this little compressed stuff in the bottom and it's all the food that they need. And all you have to do is just keep them in their cup. They don't even tell you to clean it out, which in hindsight, seems kind of gross. So we absolutely fell in love with this butterfly. We named her Betsy. Hey, Andy. We named her Betsy, Betsy Butterfly, the little painted lady. And before she had even flown away, we were already doing research about other butterflies in our area. Hey, Aunt Denise. Um, aw, <laughs> y'all are so cute. I'm so excited to have so many people. Y'all might, y'all might like top the, the biggest class I've ever taught, but this will be the least stressful way to do it. I'm excited. So, we fell in love with butterflies in general. We started doing research about butterflies that are here in, um, in our area. The kids' school, most of you guys know, the school that my kiddos go to has an amazing gardening program. Like, it is, it is amazing. Um, hey, Bethany. Oh, from Miss Wimpkins' class. Yay. So, this gardening program is amazing here. Um, they have a number of plants and they support, they, they grow produce to teach the kids, but along with that, we have an amazing pollinator garden. Well, when we were raising Betsy, we um, discovered that, you know, monarchs are native in our area, which I, I knew, but I guess I'd never really thought about it. So, we raised our two very first monarchs and they were actually born here in this very garden where we're sitting and that was five years ago and when we were raising them we started doing research and realizing that monarchs are, th are threatened they're very close to becoming on the on the endangered species list and it's not so much the actual monarch that is endangered hey Addie hey AJ and Jocelyn so it's not actually the monarchs themselves that are um, in danger necessarily it's their migration and so we started learning and learning and learning and we realized that not a lot of them survive in the wild, which is honestly the way nature intended it. But when you have a, a species and their way of life is threatened, they could use a little bit of help. So we decided that we were gonna bring in these butterflies, these caterpillars to raise. And from there, um, we've now raised 15 different species that are native here in our area. I've raised a, a handful of moths. Um, we don't necessarily raise moths like of the way we raise butterflies, but the kids pretty much find a caterpillar and they want to see what it turns into. So that's what we do. So what my plan is for this is that we're going to do questions at the end. When I present in person, that's how I do it, just because it, it lets the class kind of flow a little bit better. So if you have pen and paper handy, have your kids write down any questions that they might have as we're going through this. And then at the end, hey, Letitia, hey, Jennifer, hey, Sherry. Oh my goodness, so many of y'all hopping on. So if you have any questions, just, just jot them down that way. Um, we can get back to them at the end. And what I'm planning to do is we're gonna start with monarchs. Um, I actually have though five different species of butterflies. Now I'm not gonna talk about all the other species um, super in detail. That's potentially something we could do like as the weeks go on. This is not something that's gonna be over very quickly. So we can talk about that if we want to talk about other species um, monarch butterflies and uh, butterflies in the nymphality family which is where monarchs are from are very different from butterflies in the papionidae uh, or papionidae um, uh, family i'm telling you pronunciation is not my forte <laughs> but i'm working on it so those are that's a swallowtail versus um, a monarch butterfly and the main difference is like they, one stands on six legs, that is a very large bee, um, and one stands on four. And there's a, there's a lot of other differences for them, but we can go into that in another class if you guys are interested. So um, we will start, I have a couple of things that I'm gonna try. There is literally a monarch like right to my side, I'm very excited. So um, 
I'm gonna start with a couple of things. There's something that I'm gonna try. I kinda did like a little test run of it last night and it worked. So at that point, I will need some feedback from you guys to make sure that you can see what I'm trying to do. So I have this little clip-on lens that I'm gonna have to hold into the frame. I have this turned around so that y'all can see this um, the correct way. So I, it's, it's making my brain work a little harder. So this is a clip-on lens. It's a little like a macro lens that I normally use on my phone to take photos. However, I realized yesterday, if I put it on my forward facing camera, I can actually use this as a bit of a magnifying glass. So when I teach these in person, I like to show kids things hands on. I like to come around and say, here, you can look at this up close. You can touch this. Now, obviously the touching that we can't do right now. However, we can do the up close. So I'm hoping that this will work. And when I do go on and clip it on, it's gonna make the picture look a little bit fuzzy, but anything that I get super close to the lens is gonna show up super duper clear so I'm, I'm hoping at least that that's the way it works so y'all will have to tell me like yes we can see that or no it's not working because I'm sure as you guys know the closer you get on this you start to lose focus and so I'd like you guys to be able to see some up close things so let's get going guys kids did you say electrocute the butterfly <laughs> I'm gonna go with no <laughs> all right so normally at this part in my presentation, I ask the kids if, if they know what a butterfly is. So at home, you can answer me if you know what a butterfly is. Who's ever seen a butterfly? We've all seen butterflies, right? If we watch this video long enough, they might just like come by and like, they have a tendency to like smack me in the face sometimes when I'm out here. So maybe they'll do that. So um, you, if you've seen a butterfly flying around, why do we have butterflies? If you guys know that, you can answer at home. I'm sure a lot of you guys know, but some of you might not. And do you know what? Until I was a grown up, I didn't know either. There is a lot of this that I am gonna teach to you guys today that I didn't know until I was a grown up. So all of you guys that are kids, you guys are gonna know so much more than a lot of your parents probably did when they were your age. Isn't that really cool? So we have butterflies because butterflies are pollinators. Yes, Rita, yay! Butterflies are pollinators. And I'm sure you guys can think of some other pollinators that you might know. One of them just buzzed right by me a second ago. Bees, bees are pollinators. Now bees make honey. And unfortunately, none of my butterflies have ever made me honey, but it's okay, they're beautiful, so I forgive them. So they're pollinators. They go from flower to flower and they spread pollen. And there are actually some types of flowers that can only be pollinated by something as big as a butterfly. So there are some times when um, there's certain kinds of milkweed that we have here. I've actually had to help some bees who got their little legs stuck in them because the pollen sacs that need to be transferred are too big for a bee to transfer, but butterflies can transfer them. And wasps are pollinators too. Or are you saying wasps because there's one flying? <laughs> It is a bug with two wings that has a pattern on their wings. That is a great answer. That is what a butterfly is. And they usually have multiple colors on them too. So for butterflies, this is gonna be true. So the way I'm gonna explain this is the life cycle of a monarch, that this is actually a rough diagram of the life cycle of most butterflies. They all pretty much follow a very similar pattern. So. This is why I flipped this around for y'all. I colored this myself, you guys. And I will put some links in here for some pages that you can print out for your kiddos. And you guys can color some of these at home. Hey, Amanda, you are so welcome. All right, so this is where a butterfly starts. They start off as an egg. Now, normally their eggs, well, it depends on the species, but for a monarch, they typically lay their eggs on the underside of a leaf. Now, I don't know how they would illustrate that. So this one looks like it's just kind of on the top, but we'll forgive them, it's okay. So from there, they're gonna grow. Sorry, this backwards thing is testing my brain. So from there, they're gonna turn into a caterpillar. Now this says larva. That's not the word caterpillar, is it? But did you guys know that larva is another word for caterpillar? <laughs> the butterfly is something that will kill us. <laughs> no, it will save us all. It will save us. So that's like bees. Bees are how we get our food. All right, so caterpillar and larva the same thing. I'm going to be teaching you guys a lot of new words and by the end of this you guys will all be butterfly experts just like me. So the caterpillar or the larva grows and it is eventually going to eat and eat and eat and it's going to turn into a chrysalis. This also says pupa. 
A pupa and a chrysalis are the same thing. Pupa is actually the word that scientists use more than they use the word chrysalis because a pupa can actually describe a moth or a butterfly because as some of you might know, a butterfly makes a chrysalis, but a moth makes a cocoon, but both are considered a pupa. But they don't always look like this. This is more what a monarch pupa looks like or a monarch chrysalis looks like. And then after that, they turn into an adult butterfly. And of course they don't always look like this. They all have different colors. So we are gonna go through this one by one. I have a few friends with me today, guys, and we're gonna start with my butterfly friends, okay? So, a butterfly is super duper tiny when they start out as a caterpillar. Did you guys know that? So, if you guys have a quarter or you've ever seen a quarter, when a butterfly hatches, I don't have any teeny tiny hatchlings to show you guys. I wish I did, but I do have an egg that I'm gonna show y'all and we're gonna try out the little clip-on zoom lens okay so you guys have seen a quarter i'm going to do what they do in the makeup tutorials put my hand behind it so it'll focus <laughs> you guys have seen a quarter right so down here at the bottom there's some numbers right that is how big a monarch caterpillar is when they hatch they are the same size as the date on a quarter that's really really tiny right and i'm going to show you guys what one of the eggs look like i have so many fun friends to show you guys today i hope y'all are excited all right so I'm gonna show them to you. <laughs> oh, moths will say this. You guys. Oh my goodness. Y'all are gonna make y'all are gonna make me work for this, huh? <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna show it to you without the zoom lens, and then you'll get to see what it looks like up close. So this tiny little dot, that is hey Bella! This tiny little dot is a monarch egg, this little white dot. Now this is on the underside of the leaf. Sometimes they are on the top side of the leaves. I, I decided that sometimes monarch mamas are tired and they're like, you know what? I'm close enough, this is good enough. Let's call it, let's call it good. So sometimes they put them on um, the top, but mostly you'll find them on the bottom of the leaf. My kids are all like very well trained in how to hunt for butterfly eggs now. So now I'm gonna try this clip on lens. So I'm gonna put this over the lens. It's gonna make the whole picture look a little bit fuzzy, but in theory, when I get this up close, you should be able to see this little itty bitty egg really up close, okay? So let's give this a try. Let me know how this goes, guys. Hopefully it works like I want it to. And I don't knock over my camera. All right, it's windy. So let's see if I can hold it there. All right, can we see that? Oh, maybe not. Wow, it is. There we go. Okay, that should work. Okay. All right. So can we see that? Let me make sure I'm not knocking my, my little rig down. Okay, that's a monarch egg. They're tiny, they're white. They have little ridges on them. You might not have been able to see that because it's, it's like really hard to hold that super steady without knocking my whole setup over, just so you guys know. <laughs> so um, they're super itty bitty, but out of this will hatch a caterpillar that is awesome, yay! I'm so glad it worked, yay! Okay, I was like, was super I was super like I was hoping it would because it's like a magnifying glass right only it's like actually a little bit more of a zoom than a magnifying glass so out of this egg is gonna hatch a caterpillar that is the same size as the numbers on a quarter that caterpillar is going to grow and grow and grow over the space of about two weeks um, nine days to nine to 14 days is what we typically say is the the growth cycle of a, of a caterpillar um, it is rare, I think, to see the nine. Um, awesome! Hey, Brother Chapman! Um, oh, good, Scarlett. I was hoping you would chime in because I know y'all are, are you, are you watching this on TV? I'm hoping you are because I was hoping that it would be clear enough for that. Okay, so they're going to grow for about two weeks. I don't usually see the nine days. That's, I see, I read it that it's nine to 14 days. Um, however, I, I don't often see that myself. Sorry, I'm going to adjust this just like a hair. So, they're gonna grow and grow. And this isn't even the biggest that they get. This is a fifth in star monarch caterpillar. And he will probably continue to munch for at least three more days. You see him? He's a little unhappy that I'm messing with him. So caterpillars are, um, are deaf. A lot of people don't know that. They don't have ears. Um, neither do butterflies, which is funny because I talk to both of them. So I'm, you know, <laughs> wasting my breath, but that's fine. It's like talking to my kids sometimes. So caterpillars can't hear anything, but what they can feel 
at 12 to 16 days. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's longer than two weeks, uh, but two weeks is pretty much the standard. So what caterpillars can do, instead of hearing sound, they feel vibrations. So sometimes if my kids are running around and they're yelling, then the caterpillars' heads will go bump, bump, bump. And they do this like little, and it, it kind of means that they're annoyed, but it also kind of means just that they're hearing something, that they're, that they're detecting something. And so this guy has grown from the size of the numbers on a quarter. They grow, oh, that's okay. But at least it's, at least you can see the picture, yay. Um, so these guys will grow 2,000% bigger from they, the size they were when they hatched. So kids, that means that this is the same as if you were born and then two weeks later, you were the size of a bus. That is how fast and how much a caterpillar grows. So that would be a lot of food, right parents? And like clothes, like how would you, and diapers. I don't even wanna think about it. This is a lot, it's like, it's huge. So this guy is gonna continue to get way, way bigger and we want him to be nice and fat because the bigger the caterpillar, really the bigger the butterfly. The more healthy food that they're able to eat when they're caterpillars, the bigger the butterfly and the healthier the butterfly they're gonna be when they, when they grow up. So, and you see how he's got these cute little stripes, but he does not start out that way. When they are first born, they actually are gray and almost translucent. And the reason for that is because they can hide easier. Now, Butterflies and caterpillars really don't have a lot of defense at this, this stage. I have to tell you kids a secret. Are y'all ready for this? Caterpillars do not know karate. Okay, you guys, they don't know karate. So that means, hey, Deborah. So that means that if something, if a predator is trying to get them, they don't really have a lot of ways to defend themselves. So they have to rely on hiding and on camouflage and um, a few other things that they do. It's, it's mostly, hey, September, it's nice to meet you too. So mostly camouflage and, and just hiding. That's really the biggest, <laughs> so I can get more. Um, that's really the biggest, the two biggest things that caterpillars have um, to, uh, to defend themselves, that's it. Um, they can do the head bopping thing, but really, hey Miranda, um, really they don't, um, they don't have a lot more defense than that. So I know that's like a, a stunning secret guys that the caterpillars don't, they don't know karate, right? So once they eat and eat and eat, and actually as they eat and eat and eat, they go through a lot of changes. So this guy to grow to this size, he can't just stretch out. Like for humans, when we grow, our skin stretches. That's how we grow. And any moms who have a, have a kid, you can explain to your kids how skin can very much stretch when you need to grow, right? So that's not how skin works on a caterpillar. Whenever they get too big for their skin, they have to climb out of it, which sounds so crazy, right? It's kind of like if you think about like a sleeping bag, you can climb inside a sleeping bag and then you unzip it and you climb out. Well, that's what they do. Their skin, they'll sit for about a day and a half and their skin will loosen. They have a fluid that releases under their skin and it'll loosen it and then their skin will split and they will crawl right out of it. And they usually eat it. Jennifer, you can't hear me? Is anybody else having trouble with the sound? You might need to crank your volume. Hopefully it's not me. <laughs> So sometimes after they, um, hey Addison. So sometimes after they climb out of their skin, they eat it, which is super gross, right? Super gross. But for a bug, that is protein. So it's, okay, awesome, awesome. Jennifer, you might need to crank up your sound. So it's, it's kind of like, um, Got a message, sorry. Oh, yay, hi Jennifer, yay. Okay, okay, good, good, glad the sound is okay. So their skin is a form of protein. And what that does is it's, it's like, just like an extra little snack for them, which is a good thing, even though it sounds kind of gross to us. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna go through five chain, five instars is actually what it's called. This is one of the vocab words that we're gonna learn, guys, instar. An instar is very similar to a level in a video game. You are so welcome. Hey, Allie. So you guys, I'm sure you guys have all played video games and when you play your video game and you get to the end of a level, you level up, right? 
Well, when these guys get to the end of an instar, they get bigger. And an instar is just a way of saying a level. So they're gonna go through five instars. This guy is the fifth, and the egg that you saw is like, is like zero. That's like before a crank. Did I, what did I say? I'm sorry, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Logan, you're gonna have to be more specific. <laughs> hey, Haley, hi. Or is it Hallie? Oh my gosh, please tell me I'm not saying that wrong. Guys, please, if I butcher your kid's name, please correct me. Haley or Hallie? Hi. I think it's ha Haley. <laughs> um, so, once they get to the end of this cool little transformation that they do, and they crawl out of their skin for the last time. So, Amanda, I'm going to do questions at the end, and I have a list for you of what you'll need. Ah! <laughs> Thank you guys. So once they get to the end of this, they are gonna crawl up to the top of their enclosure, like when I have them at my house, or if they're up here at the school, we found some in that tree. You gotta point the right way, that tree right there. You can see the edge of, I found two in there yesterday. So they go somewhere that they feel is safe and secure and they build what's called a silk button. And what they do is they actually spin silk with their mouth and it's very similar to what a spider does to make a spider web. It's the same type of silk, only for a caterpillar it comes out of their mouth, not their bottoms like a spider. Just much better, right? So what they're gonna do is they will climb up. I'm gonna put our little friend back in here because it's a little bit windy and we don't want him to fall off. Hey, Caitlin. So let's, I guess I gotta get my other one out for you. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna pick a spot that they feel like is super duper safe. They're gonna make that silk button and then they're going to hold on to it with their very back feet. And the back feet on a caterpillar and actually all of their feet are called pro legs. So they're gonna hold on with that. Yes, airplane, sorry. Hey, Kenley and Josie. Hey, Miss York. All right, so what they're gonna do is they're gonna hold on with these pro legs and they will stay like this for about 24 to 36 hours. And what is happening, let me get that a little bit closer so y'all can see it. It is kind of gross. Oh, it's gonna get it's gonna get grosser, Bella. Kids usually love this part. So they're gonna hold on for about 24 to 36 hours. And what they're doing is it looks like, you know what? I'm showing y'all a chrysalis and I have I have a J to show y'all. We call this hanging in J. Whenever these guys get attached, you get him out of here. <laughs> And he actually might pupate very soon. So he has been hanging here for about a day. You see how his little, these are called filaments, the little black strings coming off of him. That's not an antenna. Those are actually called filaments. <laughs> um, so um, he's been hanging here for about a day. Do you see this white thing at the end of him? We will look at this with the magnifier in just a minute. So this little white dot that he's holding on to. He's holding on to that with his pro legs. And what's gonna happen is he's gonna hang like this until eventually he sheds this last this skin for the very last time. And when it splits open, there will be a green pupa underneath. And pupa, we learned earlier, right? You're welcome. So the pupa underneath. So when we first had our caterpillars, I had looked at so many pictures of what a butterfly chrysalis looked like, what a caterpillar looked like. I had researched all of this. Nobody told me that when they first split out of this skin, that it looks like a giant booger. You guys, I was convinced that our caterpillar, hey Jane, I was convinced that our caterpillar was broken and that he had done something terribly, terribly wrong because he looked gross. He looked like a big slimy booger, he really did. And for the parents who know uh, Slimer from Ghostbusters, that's, uh, you had a butterfly, that's awesome. So it looked super gross. But what happens is it's because everything's a little bit mushy when they first come out and then it hardens into the chrysalis, the pretty chrysalis that I was holding a second ago. So let me clip this lens on and I'm gonna let you guys see. And now he is getting really close to pupating. So a lot of his skin is kind of translucent and it's super easy to see a lot of different parts. So I have, I have a little pointer that I'm gonna use. And by pointer, I mean stick for doing manicures, but it works as a pointer, right? So I'm gonna put our little, I'm gonna clip our little lens on real quick, okay? Let's see. All right, so. 
gonna get this. Ooh, it's gonna take me a second to line it up. All right, so let's see if I can point. That right there is a silk button. It looks clear on my screen, so hopefully it looks clear on yours. That is a silk button, all of that silk. This caterpillar made that with his mouth. So you see how he's a little bit translucent and you can kind of see through his skin what you are seeing under there. And I'm gonna point to it if I can without upsetting him. So what you're seeing right in there, sorry, hang on guys, airplane is the pupa. That's him underneath the skin. And he has something, take that off. He has something under his skin that is right up here at the top. It's called a cremaster. And that I will show you on, um, on the chrysalis. Hang on, give me one second. Okay. Sorry, fixing stuff making sure I'm seeing everybody's comments. All right, so this underneath here is a cremaster. And what that's gonna do, and it's the most stressful part whenever they pupate. It'd actually be pretty cool if he just like started pupating right now, right? Like it's seriously, oh, you guys are so awesome. <laughs> so what he's gonna do is eventually these feet that he's holding on with are gonna let go. And what's gonna happen is he has to do a quick switch with that cremaster. Now, if he misses, he'll fall. And I can't tell you how many times I've had one that was in an enclosure at the house when I was first learning about all of this, and I would sit there like this. And I would think, oh my gosh, I have to, it's gonna fall. They don't know what they're doing. You know what they're doing. And yes, sometimes they fall. Like right now it's kind of windy, and if it got super windy, that could cause them to fall. Or if for some reason they were sick, it could cause them to fall. However, most of the time, they know what they're doing. And it is an amazing process to see, and it happens super fast too so if you're like basically if I get up to go to the bathroom um, I usually will miss it so anytime I want to see a butterfly pupate I just have to be willing to not go potty for a little while and then I'll be okay so we're actually I'm gonna leave him right here he is literally like he is going to pupate anytime now guys but I don't want to leave him just sitting because of how windy it is so I'm gonna set him kind of off to the side over here and if he starts to pupate which would be amazing we will watch him Okay. All right, that does not feel secure. Hang on one second. So after he goes through this whole awesome transformation, I almost said magical, but let's be honest, this isn't magic, it's science, right? So after he goes through this whole transformation, now you guys watch, he's gonna pupate over here and I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna fix us really quick. Every time I put that clip on lens on, the only downside is it, it messes with my, ooh, with my frame, just a hair. Just gonna fix this. Sorry guys, have to like get all close for a second. All right, so after they go into their chrysalis and get all, um, after they pupate, that's the word we're looking for. Sorry, I made myself uh, lose my own train of thought. Here's my chrysalis, that's what I need next. So after he hangs and he pupates and he doesn't look like a booger anymore. Yes, yeah, science is magical. I just, I always hesitate to say magic because I know that kids do live in a world where we've got a lot of make-believe stuff and I always want to specify this is very real this happens because of science and because you know miracles <laughs> so let's see if I can I might have to break some of these off sorry I didn't really think that through before now so this is what he's gonna look like do my makeup tutorial you see the white button at the top guys I feel like that's probably not super focused but hopefully it is so the white button at the top, that is the very same button that you saw on the caterpillar. It is. So that's the very same button that you saw on the caterpillar and they hold on to it with this. And this black thing right here, use my little pointing stick right there. That's the cream master. I'm going to show you that in a zoom in just a second. So that is how they hold on. And at the very top of this, it has a whole bunch of hooks and it grabs onto that silk. And that's how they hang. And they've got to pick a good spot because it takes about two weeks for them to turn from this, from this into a butterfly. So hopefully they pick a spot that's really good. Now I will say, this guy did not pick a spot that was really good. He actually picked a branch on the crepe myrtle tree behind me that fell, um, I'm guessing maybe in a storm. And as I was about to pull the branch out of the flower bed to just to get it out of the way and um, move it, I 
I noticed him. So fortunately for him, he saw it, but otherwise it was a very secure location. So let me clip this on and I'm gonna show this to you guys super up close. Hey, Nicole. Okay, so I'm gonna hold him steady with my finger and just get close. All right, so that is the silk button and that is the cream master. And while I've got this on here, I'm gonna show you guys something super cool. So a lot of you who are used to my butterfly shenanigans, um, you know that um, I talk about how I can tell if a butterfly is a boy or a girl once they're in a chrysalis. Well, if I can get it close enough and the lighting will cooperate, there is a mark just between, hang on. <laughs> Patience with me, y'all. Okay. So there is a mark right between those two black dots. And this one is a boy. See how that's a dimple right in between there? So the two, the lowest two black dots. Now let me make sure I'm seeing that right. Yep, that is a dimple. Now, in this area, this is the area that I'm talking about. I'm gonna get up here close. Okay. So this is, wow, I need like five extra hands, y'all. So right there, that's the area I'm talking about, is right in between those lowest two dots, there is a small dimple. Now that same spot would be, um, would be a line if this is a female. But that's a tiny little dimple. And take that back off, sorry. As I'm looking at it with my, yeah, it's a dimple. <laughs> so the, the problem is when I get this all up close, I'm blocking my own view of this screen. So I'm having to like, okay, is that what it is? But it is a dimple. So this is a guy, it's a male, a male butterfly. And he's going to hang out in here for likely about two weeks. When I found him yesterday, his chrysalis was still pretty soft. So that means that it was brand new. And so he will sit in here and he will harden for the next couple of days or for the next couple of weeks, I'm sorry. And then after spending time in here, oh, let me show you one more quick thing while I've got this out. So this is a question that I get asked by a lot of kids. So I'm gonna answer it even though I don't have a kid here asking me a question. These guys have gold on them. And no, I did not paint it there. That is one of my favorite questions. I love that kids think that I'm doing butterfly arts and crafts. So that is a gold band. And then there's actually a couple of gold dots down here at the bottom. These are pretty incredible. So scientists, guys, this is why kids, a lot of people will say that, oh, we know all we can figure out about science and everything. Kids, this is why y'all need to grow up and be a scientist because scientists still don't know, not just specifically for this, but because there's a lot that we don't know about science and there's still a lot that we're waiting to discover. Scientists don't know why butterflies have gold on them. They have a lot of guesses or theories like maybe it's for camouflage, maybe it's to, to confuse predators. Um, I know, right? It's it's insane, Miss York. I'm sorry. I can't because y'all are my kids' teachers. I'm like they will read, they will watch back through this and be like, Mom, her name is Miss York. So they are incredibly sturdy. If you think about it, they're used to being outside and in the weather. Now I'm jiggling him a little bit more than than like the normal, but I promise after this class is done, he's gonna go live the good life and a pop up in my in my house and, and he won't get jiggled around anymore. So the gold on here could be to confuse predators. It could actually be to transfer oxygen to them. So something that a lot of people don't realize, there is a living pupa inside of here. We talked about pupa is um, the same as a chrysalis. So there is a small, there's a pupa inside of here. This is alive. If I were to put this in a cup with no air, it would actually suffocate and die. Now it would have to be a pretty small cup because they don't need a ton of air, but they do actually need air. And there are spiracles. I can show these to you. I'm so excited. So I get to show these to kids in person when I teach, but it's not, you can't really see these unless you have like the magnification like I have. So I'm super excited I can show this to y'all. So I'm gonna show y'all what a spiracle looks like. And a spiracle is used to transfer oxygen while they're in here. So I'm gonna hold him like this and see, oh, hang on. Sorry, guys. All right, nope, that's not a spiracle. I'm trying to not grab him a whole lot and I'll explain why in a minute. So do we see these little holes right there? They're oval and sideways. Those are spiracles, and that transfers oxygen to the pupa that is inside of there. Hey, Vanessa. 
that transfers oxygen inside of there. Now, the reason that I said I was trying to not touch them. Kids, do you guys know what a bruise is? Like, if you bump yourself, like, see, I have, I don't know if y'all can see it. Uh, a little bit. I have a bruise on my arm. I was actually not from a bump, but it's turned into a bruise anyway. So a bruise is like if you bang into something. Well, if I were to touch this like a few times every single day, it would start to get bruised. It's kind of like what happens to a piece of fruit. If you touch it too many times, it starts to get bruised and like bananas will turn brown and apples get big spots on them. That's because this is a cuticle and it is made from the same thing that is in your fingernails, but it's very, very delicate. So I can touch them a little bit to move them around, but for the most part, I really try not to handle these very much because I could damage the butterfly that's inside of there and they would be unable to come out as a butterfly. All right, so we are now gonna talk about the butterfly. Okay, he still, ha he still hasn't pupated. I'm seriously, I'm, we're gonna miss it and he's literally sitting six inches from my side. I know that's how that's gonna happen. I'm gonna look over and he's just gonna be the big green blob and we'll have missed it. But I'll still show him to you when he turns into the big green blob. Hey, Miss Kim! missed you. <laughs> Kim is my former co-worker, you guys. Okay, so now we're gonna look at real butterflies. Now, like I said, I normally teach this class in person. So I've taught it enough that I already know the questions that your kids might be asking as they're looking at me opening these and taking them out. Yes, guys, these are real butterflies. They are dead. And no, I did not kill them. And I promise you, that is without a doubt, every time I do a lesson, I get asked those questions. And it's my favorite thing ever because kids are just, kids are so awesome. So this is, these are, so these are dead butterflies. Now, I know it does, so why are they dead? That is an excellent question. I did not kill them. Sometimes when butterflies emerge, they are not completely healthy. So what happens is I save them and let them dry out so that I can use them for classes just like this. Now, part of the butterfly life cycle is that everything that is alive or part of the life cycle in general is everything that's living will one day die. So butterflies life cycle is about four to six weeks. Um, when we talk about the migration, we'll talk about how some of them do actually live a little bit longer than that. But however, part of their life cycle is that they are born, they grow into a butterfly, and then they die. And if you think about it, we couldn't just always have all these butterflies flying around. They can't live forever because we would run out of nectar and things for them to eat. So it's just a part of the butterfly life cycle that eventually all things, I know it does seem so, it does seem sad. You know what? I'm not sure how much longer <laughs> we'll be. Um, I'm gonna switch to migration in just a minute and we'll show you some of our other caterpillars. This is this is going a little longer than my classes in person normally do, but the logistics of uh, figuring out all of the <laughs> all of this stuff is uh, taking a little bit longer. So yes, they are dead, but not because I killed them and it's, I've just saved them so that I can show you guys in person what a butterfly looks like. So this is a boy butterfly and I'm going to show you how I can tell. Do you see these little dots? Let me get my pointer. See these little dots down here, right there. That is called a pheromone dot and I'll show you some of these up close. So you notice how his wings are a little bit, the lines on his wings are a little bit thinner and hers are a little bit thicker and she does not have those same dots. So that's how you can tell this one's a boy and this one's a girl. So the reason, main reason that I keep these is because kids really like, um, kids really like to, um, to touch and, and to look at things, you know, in person. It says it's because I keep these, these are just butterflies that died. Um, and I, um, I keep them on hand to show kids because kids are hands-on learners. And guys, if we, if we were doing this class in person, I would let you pass these around and you would get to touch them because it's really actually pretty cool to touch a butterfly's wing. Now, something that I wanna tell all of you guys, but mostly the grownups because they probably grew up believing the same things that I did. I don't spend a lot of time touching butterflies. I don't just walk outside and say, hey, I'd like to poke your wings. If you guys were like me, I grew up being told that um, these were found in the, in the garden, just out here in the garden. We spend a lot of time outside, and so um, we find a lot of butterflies after they've, after they've finished their life cycle. So I grew up being told that if you touch a butterfly's wings, they can no longer fly. That is not true. 
The only thing I can think of is that someone a very long time ago thought that that would be a good way to keep kids from putting their hands on butterflies or from picking them up. And so they're like, let's just tell the kids that you can't touch their wings. Now, is it good for them if you walk outside and you like crunch them? Obviously, no. And something I do wanna mention for all of our kids that are watching all of this, it is so fun to see butterflies and caterpillars out in nature but the very best thing that you can do for both of them is to observe them and not touch them. Do we know what observe means? Observe means to use your eyes, not your hands. So whenever you see a caterpillar crawling, even if you're so excited and you wanna to touch it, that caterpillar has a really big job to do and sometimes the germs on our hands can make them sick. Now, I washed my hands before I came and I don't spend a lot of time touching my, my caterpillars, but I did wash my hands beforehand. Um, also, if you had something on your hands like germs or even hand sanitizer could actually kill um, caterpillars because it's really bad for their skin. So, um, even if you see them outside, which is super duper fun and super cool, just watch them because it's super cool to see them in their environment and see what they do. Plus, here in Texas, we have at least three kinds of caterpillars that can sting you and hurt you really, really bad. So, if you see a caterpillar, especially a fuzzy caterpillar, you're not gonna pick them up, right? just gonna look at them with our eyes because that's far more fun to do anyway and even maybe take pictures of them that's something I really like to do so we're gonna talk about the parts of a butterfly now any of you guys who know anything about insects did you guys know that a butterfly was an insect it is now I think I knew that when I was a kid maybe or maybe I just didn't think about it however it's a little confusing because when you look at a butterfly these guys look like they only have four legs. Now it's kind of hard to see their legs because they're folded up, but these guys look like they only have four legs. Now they stand on four legs, but what they have is up really close to their body. And I should be able to show you when we look at this on the zoom lens, they have something um, called brush feet. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you like a funny little demonstration of how brush feet work. So who knows what a T-Rex is? T-Rex, the dinosaur. Yes, the fuzzy ones, Hazel. The fuzzy ones are to be avoided. So, T-Rex, they hold their little arms like this. Oh, bunch of birds. So, T-Rex hold their arms like this. Butterflies do the same thing. This type of butterfly is from the Nymphality family. They hold their little brush feet up against them like this. And when you hear someone say, oh, butterflies eat with their feet, that's not entirely true. They don't eat with their feet, but they do in fact taste with their feet. And what they will do is they will extend, I need something to hold my butterfly in place because it's windy. So what they'll do is they will extend their brush feet and taste whatever they're on. So they scratch the surface with, this, with these brush feet and they determine, is this the food that I might wanna eat or is this the milkweed that I might wanna lay my eggs on? So those brush feet are super duper important. So I'm gonna put on my little, my little clip-on lens and we're gonna look at a few things on these butterflies. Hang on one second. So, sorry guys, I am still very much figuring out how to, how to navigate doing this on a, on a video. Okay, let me get that adjusted. All right, so I'm gonna show you something really cool. So we talked about how butterflies are pollinators. Do you know where they carry the pollen? on their very fuzzy oh that was windy sorry on their fuzzy backs can you guys see that now fun fact that looks like fur right all right in here let me get a button or pointer in there that looks like fur but it is not fur those are actually modified scales and they are very similar to the scales that you see on the rest of this butterfly something else that's very cool they have polka dots on their body which is super cute and uh oh did we lose our video let me see hang on let me see if i can no nope. all right yep i see that a couple of people it looks like hopped off okay is it still frozen i might need to hop off and restart oh are we good let me know if we're back I saw Amanda say we're good. Oh, Michelle, you can see. I was gonna say we dropped from 70 people to 40 people. So I think a few people lost video. Let me know if you're, if you, you might have to go out of the video and come back in. If you lost, uh, if you lost the video. 
Is it frozen? Jennifer, if you can still hear the audio, um, try going out of the video and come back in. That'll sometimes help. You still have it, Mel? Okay, anyone who is, has a frozen video, if you can hear, um, if you can hear audio, or maybe can somebody put in the comments, because um, I can't type comments from here, um, try going out and coming back in. If the video is frozen, um, try going out and coming back in. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys, I'm actually gonna switch to this other butterfly because this guy has, he's, he's, he's been around a few different kids and so he's lost his antenna. <laughs> so, all right, so let me get this situated again. So, this is, oh, this one might be harder to show. All right, let's see. Can y'all see the end of that antenna? It has a little club on it. That is what a butterfly's antenna looks like. Oh, it might be, yeah, from the wind. So this is the, this is a butterfly's antenna. And butterflies use their antenna, sorry, that is very hard to get into frame. Um, they use their antenna for a lot of different things. They use them to sense the weather. They use them to find um, each other. And um, awesome, thank you guys. Um, and then they also use these when they, when they migrate, the ones that migrate use these. All right, so I'm gonna show this up close to you because I was stunned when I got to see monarch scales for the first time up close. So that is what you are looking at. You see how those almost look like, like pixels or like little bits? So those are butterfly scales. So when I was telling you guys that if you touch a butterfly's wings, I'm gonna show this to you so it's not just fuzzy. So when I was saying that if you touch a butterfly's wings, they can still fly, let me explain to you why. So if I rub on this, I'm gonna have scales on my finger. Do you see those? But does it, do you see a mark on here? You can't tell where I touched it, right? That's because butterflies have thousands and thousands of scales. So as they fly, they bump into things or something brushes against them or they're out in the weather or the wind or whatever. And all it does is it just kind of flakes these off. And so they're able to continue flying and to keep going even if they lose a few scales here and there. So this guy you can see kind of has some, actually this girl, I'm sorry. She's kind of got a few nicks and dings on her, but when she, when she died, she was not, she had not been out for very long. But when they have been out and about for a really long time, their wings start to lose, like the little edges start to chip off and all of that. So this is my girl, my girl butterfly. So, um, oh, he's still not, he's still not pupating. I keep checking. <laughs> All right, hopefully everybody is back on and we're not, uh, we're not frozen, everybody that was having problems. All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about monarchs migrating. So, <laughs> they bump on your window, yes. They do, they flap up against stuff. And, and now that I'm an adult and I understand that the logistics of their wings, it seems really silly that when I was a kid that I thought that butterflies would never fly again if I touched their wings. But you kids that are watching, you guys are gonna know way more than I did when I was, I was an adult before I knew that butterfly wings, that, that doesn't hurt them. Now, like I said, that doesn't mean that we run outside and we're like, hey, let's touch all the butterflies, because that's not a good idea. But it will not keep them from flying if you, you know, pick one up and help them fly. So what I'm gonna show you guys is a couple of things. So we're gonna talk about the monarch migration. So I know that you guys have probably heard about that. The monarch migration is famous. And do you know what's really funny? There's actually a lot of types of butterflies that migrate. So when it gets cold here, we're gonna talk about migration. I'm gonna explain to you guys what migration means. Some of you kids might know what migration means and I know that you adults do. <laughs> but that means that it gets, the weather in a certain place gets it gets too cold. It's usually when it gets too cold and the, the butterflies have to go somewhere that's warmer because they are cold blooded. That means that they can't just, you know, they can't, they can't rub on themselves. They can't go buy a little butterfly sweater and warm up. Airplane. They can't buy a butterfly sweater. They can't. Now they do, they do vibrate their wings a little bit and they also open their wings really wide to collect sunlight. But if it's too cold for that to even matter, they can't fly in temperatures that are under 50 degrees which is not super duper chilly, but it's chilly enough that their cold blooded bodies, they can't fly. So they all get together and they fly down to Mexico and butterflies as far up as Canada and butterflies all over the world do this, but only the butterflies here in the United States are the ones that go down to Mexico. So I'm sure you guys have heard about that. And what's super amazing about this is that butterflies weigh the same as a paper clip. 
that's it. That's all they weigh. They weigh the same as a paperclip and they fly thousands and thousands of miles. Now, what do they do when they go down to Mexico? Are they down there having a party? So this is a picture. So this book is fantastic. We'll talk about this book in a minute, but I'm gonna use this picture as I'm gonna get it straight. So these are butterflies hanging on a tree. There's a tree underneath all of those butterflies. And what they're doing is they're huddling together for warmth, for protection, um, and just as a place where they can, so they can sleep and be safe. So they hang out down there. They don't move around a whole lot, which means they don't have to eat a whole lot and they wait for it to get warmer. And what happens is these big warm gusts of air will come through and that's what triggers them to know, oh, hey, it's getting warmer and I can probably, I can fly away now. And while they're down there, they're not having babies. They're not really flying around a ton. All they do is they'll sometimes flutter down, they'll get some food and then they all just cluster back around these trees. Now, the bigger trees fill up faster because the bigger trees hold the most warmth from the sun during the day and the skinnier trees don't and so you see a lot of butterflies and scientists have guessed that there's about five butterflies per square inch like in that picture that I just showed you five butterflies per square inch that is like ultimate bunk bed right there so they all cluster together in a really tight little circle because it keeps them safe um, if predators come by and it and it does help keep them warm so we're gonna talk about this cool book so I don't, I don't sell this, but Lynn is a friend of mine who wrote this book. This is an awesome resource if your kids want to do butterfly related um, or specifically monarch related things at home. Um, and just, you know, shameless, like shameless mom brag. These are my kids, y'all. I have kids that are the same ages as a lot of you guys. This is Hannah, ooh, Hannah, Charlie, and Colin. And my kids are, oh, how old are they? Hang on seven, nine, and 11. They were a little younger when we took this, this picture. So um, Lynn wrote this book and it is actually full of a whole bunch of like really cute um, activities. And what's really great about this is this explains um, the, the cycles of the monarch and, and a lot of aspects of it in scientific terms, but not to the point that it goes over your kid's head. I use this in every single presentation that I do not just because my adorable kids are in it, but because it is a really, really good resource. It's just, you can order it on Amazon um, or what have you, but Lynn is, a, Lynn is a good friend of mine. And I feel like this book is, is really, really awesome. And I know a lot of kids have an interest in, in migration. Now, kids, how many of you guys live in the Houston area? You can raise your hands if you're at home. Houston area, and I know all of our, our school family kiddos who are watching, the migration is coming, you guys. It has already started on a very small scale. So that means that these butterflies in Mexico are feeling like, oh my gosh, we need to go, we need to go. It's time to go back to all of these warmer places and to have babies and lay eggs like up here at the school. Last year, our school had two dozen monarchs in our orchard that actually set up here for a couple of weeks and they would munch on all the flowers back there, which was amazing to see. And honestly, if the wind blows just right, um, even from the orchard, I can smell the flowers in the orchard from over here. It's, it smells like heaven, it's great. So the monarch migration is coming. You're gonna see a lot more monarchs in our area because Houston is one of the first places they stop, which is pretty cool. And it's also one of the last places they stop before they get down to Mexico. So if you're outside, playing outside in your yard in the next couple of weeks and you see monarchs flying, that's the monarch migration. And those guys have flown thousands and thousands of miles. Now, oh, did I count them? Uh, no. <laughs> um, so the, uh, or the, the dozen and the, the two dozen and the, I really did because I kept seeing them and I kept thinking, am I seeing just the same few over and over or are we really seeing? And so the kids and I would, we stood in different places in the, in the orchard. I thought you were talking about counting the ones that were hanging in the pictures. I was like, no, I didn't. Uh, but we stood in different places and we we're like, okay, I see five right now. Okay. I see six right here. And so we were able to, um, oh, oh, he hasn't. Oh, thank you for reminding me, Chantal. He hasn't. He's still sitting here. I seriously think he's gonna wait. Okay, somebody go to the bathroom. Just anybody, go to the bathroom. That's, that's what triggers it. Every time you go to the bathroom, they pee face. <laughs> so that's what we need. No, he's still sitting, he's still hanging out. He's doing his, uh, he looks like he's doing caterpillar yoga. Right before they, they pupate, they like contract their bodies kind of in and out and it's really funny. So he looks like he's doing caterpillar yoga. But of course, if I move him, he'll shrink up and he'll get freaked out. So we'll, we'll move him, I'll move him if he starts, if he starts going. Okay, actually I might move him, hang on, because he really is, 
getting started. This would be the second time that I got one to cooperate and pupate while I was teaching a class and I would be like super excited. Okay, I'm gonna bend this piece of paper out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna get him, I, your comments are covering where he's sitting so y'all are gonna have to tell me if you can see him where he's at. I wanna get this bent out of the way though so it doesn't touch him. They get a little annoyed if, um, if things touch them like while they're pupating. Um, it's like it makes them kind of have like a curl up reflex. Is he in focus if I leave him just kind of sitting right here? Does that work? I can kind of see it a little bit like <laughs> y'all's comments take up half the screen and so um, as those feed through I can't tell if he's if he's in focus. I can actually move him closer but let me know if that let me know if that works. See every time he jiggles of course they're used to being outside and jiggling but I'm gonna hold his cup because I don't want the wind to come and blow in. So these butterflies that migrate. So I told you earlier that butterflies live for four to six weeks, right? Well, that's not very long to go all the way down to Mexico. Okay, so if y'all can see him from here, we'll leave him, we'll leave him for now. So you see this, this curling thing that he's kind of doing? That's, he's getting ready. He's actually right now separating his skin from the pupa underneath. He's like flexing. So, and it's, it's like a muscle thing that he's doing. Now when he goes completely straight and looks more like the letter I than the letter J, that's when he's about to, to turn into a booger. <laughs> so I would seriously be like over the moon if he will cooperate and pupate for y'all. He's, yeah. All that he is doing is, is what normally happens when that happens, so. All right, so four to six weeks is not a very long time. But the butterflies that migrate to Mexico are incredibly special. So when butterflies come back in the spring, the eggs that are gonna be laid around here, those butterflies are gonna live for four to six weeks. They will then travel to another area and they will lay eggs and those will travel to another area and they will lay eggs. And so that is, there's generations is what they call it. It's kind of like waves of butterflies that are born because they can't all make that migration all by themselves all the way back north from being in Mexico. The very last of those generations of butterflies are called the Methuselah generation. And those butterflies are able to live for six to eight months. And their wings are actually shaped different than a normal, um, than a, than the normal monarch. So these guys that I showed you, I don't want to bump him, so I don't want to grab my, um, the guys that I just showed you, those are regular, not migratory butterflies, but butterflies that are migratory, their top wings are actually shaped longer and more streamlined. And that is because they're going to fly a whole lot more than the butterflies that came before them. Now, again, this is something that we talked about with scientists. Scientists really don't know everything. They know a lot and they're very smart and they, they teach us a lot. However, they don't know what makes the Methuselah generation be born. It's temperature, it's the length of sunlight in the day, it could be a combination of all of those things, but something triggers, y'all are probably gonna have to like tell me, hey, he's pee baby, because <laughs> I really can't see it under the comments. That's hilarious. Oh, and I don't wanna move your comments because I wanna be able to see those. His little filaments are blowing in the wind, I love it. So, um, they, something in nature triggers these guys to, um, to say, hey, um, the eggs that are, that are being laid now are Methuselah butterflies, and these are gonna live for six to eight months, and that is how this species can continue. So what is being threatened is the, when we talk about butterflies being kind of in danger, it's because um, they're, they don't have a lot of resources for there at the end when they're about to migrate, and then two, their migration is at risk because if they don't get the normal cues to migrate or if, you know, a lot of their migration routes are like on freeways, which does not go well. So there's a lot of factors to it. He is trying so hard, y'all. Like this is, I'm very excited. I hope he, I hope he's able to, he's able to pupate. And I'll sit here with my hand under him just in case. So that's what we do, right? All right, so let's talk a little bit while we wait for this guy about, I have these other butterflies that I wanna show you. So Wendy, we do usually name them. My kids, the very first couple years that we raised butterflies, we named every single solitary one that we released. And our first year we released over 600. And we like kept track of it in a journal and everything. My kids sincerely love this process and love everything about this and so they like to name them now we used to name them as caterpillars we have since realized that that causes a lot of frustration with the kids because they get upset that 
hey, I named this, you know, like Ariel and now it's a boy. And so, hi, Audrey. So, um, we name them as butterflies or actually um, we even name them in chrysalis because as I showed you earlier, we can tell what their gender is when they're in chrysalis. So, um, I will show you these other species once this guy like gets done doing his thing. But we can talk about different plants um, that we can plant around here and then we can actually do some questions and then I can show you all these butterflies or we can save that for another video. Um, you guys will kind of have to tell me. And so, um, so we're here in Texas. Hey, honey. Um, we're here in Texas, right? So this, these nectar plants are not going to be true for everywhere. If you're somewhere other than Texas, the best thing to do is go to Google and just nectar plants that are native in your area. It's pretty important to get them from a reliable source. Um, a lot of places like Home Depot, um, I mean, honestly, it's, it's fun to raise them from seed, but not everybody's cut out for that. I have a bit of a brown thumb, so trust me, all of my advice is coming to you from very much a place of a person who is not amazing at growing plants and very much learning it. So, um, you, places like Lowe's, Home Depot, all of that, they tend to buy plants that have been treated, which is not the best. Um, and so it's just really important to, to go somewhere that's more like a, um, a, like a private nursery and just ask them, have your plants been treated? Um, that's the best way to go. So out here in Texas, um, if y'all want to write down some little notes or I can uh, put this in a comment later, uh, purple coneflower, which if I lean the right way, I don't know if there aren't any back there. There's blue bonnets back there though. Blue bonnets are pollinator plants. Did y'all know that? I didn't know that until like way later. Hey, Angelina. So I was, I didn't, I didn't know that blue bonnets were pollinator plants, but they are. They're pretty amazing. So purple coneflower, I thought we had some. I thought there were some behind me. Maybe there are. There's some right in front of me. But I decided that um, I, uh, I didn't want to like carry the camera around because it gets real jostly and kind of noisy. So we're not going to do a tour. Purple coneflower, mist flower. There is a plant called Greg's mist flower that is absolutely one of the best pollinator plants that you can get. They will almost let you walk right up to them when they're on it because they are just so involved in it. It's a very, very good nectar plant. So Greg's mist flower. Um, lantana, everybody has lantana. It's a really popular one that a lot of people use in their landscaping. It's the ones that have the little cluster flowers. I'm telling you, Texas lantana can stand up to like a lot. And so my, my neighbor, um, actually us and our neighbor, here is a Palamides swallowtail nectaring right in front of me, you guys. Nature is awesome. So, oh, did you see the black spot that just went behind me? That's Palamides swallowtail. So, um, they, um, the lantana plants, our, our neighbor and I, we have one that, that is like in between our fence line and he has cut it back to just this tiny little nub because it gets, I will leave a list of them. I will leave a list of the plants. That's a really good idea. I was thinking about that as I was seeing it and I was like, oh, writing it down is kind of a pain right now. There is a monarch caterpillar on, um, the plant across from me who's wandering around. He's a big fat guy. I should go grab him and show you guys what they look like when they're ready to pupate. He's wandering on a leaf. Um, off of the milkweed, so he's probably ready to pupate. I just looked over and saw him. So, um, the, the um, but this lantana, every time it gets cut back, it just, it comes back. Cause it'll, it'll, like the leaves and stuff will die back and it'll look like it's dead, but then you just trim it back some and it's fine. Um, sage is a good one, which a lot of people don't think about sage, like the, you know, the, um, spice, but it actually, it puts off purple flowers that are really great. Um, vervain is another one. I did write myself a cheat list for these because it's plant. I'm, I'm new to plants. I'm learning my, my plant stuff. And so I had to write myself some notes and then aster. Now, if you are wanting to see, okay, I've got, I gotta go grab this. I'm gonna go grab this, this butterfly for y'all or this caterpillar for y'all. Cause I kind of want y'all to see what he looks like. He's real big and fat. It's cute. And then I'll put him back. Okay. Watch this guy. I'll be right back. Hang on. I swear y'all he heard me coming he started he started bopping his head he didn't hear me coming because remember we talked about how butterflies are deaf but so he is traipsing along look how chunky he is he's actually a little bit shrunken because I scared him a little bit but he'll he'll walk in just a second and we'll look at him so if you're wanting to see caterpillars in your yard now this one's a little bit more of a complicated answer if you want to see monarchs in your yard you need milkweed 
the reason for that, and a lot of people, it's something I didn't think of either, they can only eat one plant, and that is milkweed. And by eat, I mean as caterpillars. Um, obviously the butterflies can nectar on anything that is a nectar source, but specifically they need milkweed to be able to lay their eggs and complete their life cycle. There are several different varieties of milkweed. Um, you'll hear people try to say that there are some that are better than others. It's really all a matter of opinion. Honestly, science hasn't really proven one way or another. Um, which one is is better than the other the the main thing is if you choose um, Tropical milkweed keep it cut back just because there are it, it's just healthier for the plant um, I could go into some details, but there's there's a spore that happens um, In in monarchs and it can build up over time on your plants. It's obviously not harmful to humans But it could be to to caterpillars. So all right guys. I was trying to see if he would walk Let me see if he Look at his, so these are filaments right here. These little black things. Everybody wants to call them, uh, another monarch. Everybody wants to call them uh, antenna, but they're not antenna until he turns into a butterfly. But those are called filaments and they, they might be used to detect moving. Oh, guys, guys, guys. See, I knew, I knew he was gonna do it. All right, we're gonna put, we're gonna put this other guy. We're gonna put this guy off to the side and we might, we'll watch this guy. I might, I'm gonna. Might leave this here. All right, so he's totally straight. I really feel like I need to like, it's so windy. I think I feel like I need to make sure he's okay. Can y'all see him? Hey, mom. All right, can we see him? All right, let me angle y'all down just a little. Okay, I, fear, I forget y'all are on a little bit of a delay. So what I'm seeing is like a couple seconds from what y'all are seeing. All right, I don't want to move him too much now that we've gotten to this point. So I am going to turn this though, because you should, I can't see it from my side, but you should be able to see um, the green pupa underneath, like right there. I can only see him from, oh, yep, I can't see it by lean. So that is his, that is the pupa underneath. That is what is going to eventually be the cool green chrysalis that I showed you. I cannot believe he's doing this on my live video. I'm so excited. It's so nice to have butterflies that do my bidding, right? <laughs> All right, so what is happening right now is these ripples that you see happening. Y'all can see, right? Um, so the ripples that you see happening, he is turning green. That is muscles contracting because he is splitting his skin and it's gonna go all of the skin is gonna go up here by his feet he has to do those contractions in order to get all of the skin off now the side that you guys are looking at is his back this is what will have that pretty gold band hi so butterflies can die a few different ways um sometimes predators eat them and sometimes they are just old and they are just done being butterflies um, there's a few a few different ways that it happens um, but butterflies are actually part of the life cycle in all stages so when they're eggs sometimes ants will eat them caterpillars same thing um, wasps can eat them it's the not fun part of the life cycle but that's kind of how the life cycle works is everything is usually food for something else so the side that y'all are looking at is the side with the gold band and all of the gold speckles the side I'm looking at has his face so this is what will eventually, and I will show you this with the macro, because this is pretty incredible to get to see in person. So the side that I'm looking at has what will eventually be the butterfly antenna, their proboscis, the legs, and his eyes. And right now, with the chrysalis being as soft as it is, it is way easier to see it than um, later on when the chrysalis is super smooth. So he is, I cannot believe, this is awesome. All right, we can see it, right? He's like in the, he's covered up by the comments for me, but hopefully y'all can see him. All right, so why don't we do that? Um, while we're watching him, y'all can ask me some questions if you want. This has been like a forever long video. Thank you guys for like hanging in here with me. I was not sure how that would go. Okay, so Cream Master. The little tiny black stick that we talked about he just got that attached and what he's gonna do is what my kids call a happy dance I'm gonna move this again because I don't want it to touch him he is going to wiggle and wiggle and wiggle and my kids call my kids call us a happy dance 
And the reason they call it a happy dance, I'm actually gonna just tip him a little bit. I don't need to keep my hand under there because he's already attached. Is because he looks like he's like, yay, I got all my skin off and now I'm dancing. But what he is actually doing is that black stick that I showed you guys, the Cree Master, he has that attached to the silk. And what he wants to do is make sure that that is so, so attached. Because like Miss York pointed out, he was the other one that I was holding, it was wiggling all around. And even when the wind blows and it kind of jiggles a little bit, it doesn't fall down. That's because the hooks that are in the very top of that Cree Master, right now he's twisting them around and he's working them in. So if you take a cotton ball and you were to take something like, let's see, like something that was rough or kind of scratchy or like a piece of Velcro. You guys know what Velcro is. There's a side of the Velcro that has those hard little pinchy pieces. He, oh, his skin fell off. That was, that's usually the best part. Um, and of course I let it fall in this little crack in the table. Here we go. This is his old skin, guys. And I want you to notice something. It's not the color of a caterpillar, is it? It's just black. Isn't that weird? His skin color was the pupa underneath. It was not his skin. I love this. And these are his little filaments that I'm holding right now. I cannot believe he did this for you guys. I am so excited. <laughs> I'm so glad. I found him yesterday and I was like really hoping that he would cooperate. So he's gonna keep twisting around and he will hang here and dry and still kind of move for about the next three to four hours. But what he's doing is just making sure that that little hook is all stuck inside of there. So if you were to take a piece of Velcro, Harmony, give me one second and I'll answer your question, sweetie. If you were to take a piece of the Velcro, like the rough side of the Velcro, and obviously you can attach it to the soft side, but if you took something like a cotton ball and you just kind of rubbed it back and forth, it would grab a whole lot of that. That's what he's doing. He's taking those rough hooks and he is grabbing into that little silk button that he made as hard as he can because the more into that he is, the less chance there is that he'll fall. Michelle, you just needed me to do a live video and then like butterflies on command, right? Isn't that amazing? I am like, oh, I will, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. The first few times I saw this, I cried a little bit. So guys, kids, was I right? I'm gonna move him closer. He looks like a booger, right? Tell me that doesn't look like a booger. Parents, Slimer from Ghostbusters, right? All right, I do wanna show you really quick with the zoom lens. We're gonna get close and I'm gonna be super careful because they are incredibly delicate, obviously, at this stage. So we'll be very careful. But I'll show you. Hang on, I gotta get him into frame. Go slow. Okay, gonna very gently, oh, see, he doesn't even want me to touch him. So right here on the front, the closer I can get, you see him wiggling? Sorry, give me just a second, there we go. So there's his, we can't tell what his gender is because it's too soft, but these lines. Down there at the bottom, those two yellow dots, those are his eyes. Those are the eyes that are eventually gonna be butterfly eyes. The lines in front of him, those are his legs, and the lines that are the, every time I touch him, he's gonna do that, sorry. So the lines that are further on the outside, those are eventually going to be the butterfly antenna. Isn't that crazy? Sorry, I know he's wiggling, but if I try to steady him, he, yeah. <laughs> if I try to steady him at all, he, uh, he protests. All right, I'm gonna put him back down in his, his little thing um, because I don't want the wind to, to get him. So, who was it that asked me? Um, Harmony. Harmony asked me, what are predators to butterflies? Harmony, that is an amazing question. And you know why? Because again, when I was a kid, I was taught that birds don't eat monarch butterflies, that they have colors that warn the birds and that the birds don't ever eat them. That is not 100% true. Kids, think about a food that you don't like. What is a food that you don't like? Like, I don't like black jelly beans, okay? Black jelly beans are super gross. But do you know how I know that I don't like black jelly beans? Because I tried them. So what happens is birds usually don't like to eat monarchs. Some of them can withstand them. But a bird will eat a monarch because it will see, hey, flappy, flappy, that looks like food, and they'll eat it. And then they'll say, blech, I don't like that. But when they take a bite, that usually kills the butterfly. So birds are predators to them. They will also eat them as caterpillars. Wasps will eat them as caterpillars and um, when they're in chrysalis and um, actually even when they're in, in as eggs. Uh, frogs, lizards, 
those are kind of the major ones and now a lot of you I'm sure have heard before that butterflies are toxic that monarch butterflies are toxic now that is true but it is not a toxic like a poison that will kill you what it is is more like they, it might give them an upset stomach but some animals can withstand it and so they don't care and so they will still be predators to to caterpillars so this guy's so cute look at this guys these big long filaments are like my favorite do y'all want to look at him with the zoom lens let's look at him with the zoom lens you can see his cute little floppy filaments Hang on. i can't tell y'all how excited Ooh, sorry can't tell y'all how excited i am that this zoom lens idea worked all right so i'm going to show you his cute little face like super up close so these black flappy things those are filaments look at that and you know what sometimes caterpillars lose them and it actually doesn't hurt anything and they still have antenna when they turn into um butterflies even if they lose their filaments but scientists best guess is that these filaments are to just kind of help them feel their way around so I'm going to show you what his little face looks like. He's not going to eat anything because he's on the wrong kind of plant. But look, he has these cute little feet. Look at that. Those are his little pro legs. And each of those legs has little tiny claws on it. And what those claws are used for is as he walks, you see him turn his head back and forth. You guys see that, how he does that? He is spinning silk. If I get him close enough, you might be able to see it. He is spinning silk as he walks. And what that silk is for, he's about to be spinning it on my thumb. What that silk is for is a lifeline. So whenever he walks, he's leaving himself a little trail. And as his other feet go forward, he holds on to that little silk trail. So if the wind blows, I don't want to, obviously, I'm not trying to hurt him, but if the wind was blowing his little leaf run, he's not going to fall off because all of these little feet are holding on to the silk that he has spun as he's walked around. That's awesome. I'm so excited, you guys. Oh my goodness. Oh, do you, oh, do we want to look at the, do we want to look at the skin? Yeah, I'm going to show you all the skin. So I hope none of y'all are like super grossed out by this or grossed out easily because all of, basically every aspect of this is like super fascinating to me. So, you know, so I'm going to show you guys what his, the old skin looks like from the caterpillar that just pupated. See, it does not have color. Isn't that awesome? You can see where the feet used to be. You can see where the face used to be. You can even see where like the little hairs and stuff were. And all of these white spots, this one might let me stretch it out. Hang on just a second. All the white or all the yellow that you were seeing was actually just seeing his pupa underneath through this these little white bits. And that was his old face. You see his old face? We just looked at the face on that big caterpillar. That's what his face looks like once it sheds. Thank you, Harmony. I, there's not an aspect of this that I am not just like completely amazed by you guys. It's, it's crazy. Does anybody else have any questions? Do we want to see other butterflies? You'll have to, now you have to give me feedback. I told y'all like, hey, save your questions for the end. And now I'm like, all the questions, all the answers. Tell me, tell me. So if you have questions, throw them out. Or do we want to see, why is it black? Because that's all that's left over. So Harmony, when that skin is all stretched out, it's black with white stripes. And they're white or clear stripes. And the clear is what you were seeing his skin underneath. And so all that's left over when he pupates is just the black skin, the, all the black stripes on there, and then the little clear parts. I am so excited, you guys. Thank you all for watching. Do we want to see the other butterflies or do we want to, or the other caterpillars, or do we want to do that another time? I have not gotten to see them in Mexico yet. It is actually one of the things that I would absolutely love to do. So why don't we do that? Why don't we do a video on swallowtails? We can do that a little bit later this week, maybe, because I feel like this has been like the longest live in history and you guys might be a little tired of looking at me now. <laughs> But we can do that. We'll do a video on swallowtails. I'll show you super fast because this, this will make you want to come back and, and watch the video on swallowtails, right? So these are not swallowtails. These are Gulf fritillary caterpillars. We can talk about them too. They're closely related to the monarchs. But I'm going to show you this. So I talked about how I don't really touch um, monarch chrysalis. Well, swallowtails are meant to stay in chrysalis for a lot longer than monarchs usually do. So their chrysalis are a little bit different. Now I don't handle them every single day but I do sometimes. So these are pipe vine swallowtails. They might not be the easiest to get to focus. 
Sometimes they're green, sometimes they're brown. They are very, they're different. Now, here's what's really crazy, guys. These have been in here since July of last year. And they're still alive. Because I told you there's pupas inside of there. So if I can wiggle this little abdomen bit, which I can, then that means they're still alive in there. Isn't that super crazy? And we can talk about how swallowtails are like the, the bad butterflies in the butterfly world because they just do whatever they want. Katie, so if you want to start your own butterfly farm, that's a, that's a tough question. So, do you want to be crazy like me and like raise them in your house or do you just want to see them outside? Because there's, there's a big difference. <laughs> um, if you want to just observe butterflies in your um in your home like to just have flowers out front nectar sources are the best way to go if you would like to see the life cycle of certain butterflies that are native in your area then the best way to go is to plant their um access the links um i'll just i can put them in the comments of this video that's it I'll post um, the plants that I talked about, and then I'll put some links up for some printable life cycle pages for your kids. But I'll post them all here in the comments, and they should all just be clickable, nothing that you have to pay for or anything like that. Um, I do this because I am a crazy butterfly person and I'm obsessed. I teach actually in several different places. Um, I do gardening groups, I teach at schools, and I even have a running gig at Huntsville State Prison, and I teach inmates about butterflies. So this is just a fun thing that I do. I don't sell anything. So I'll post some links that are just links to like outside pages where you can uh, print out different things like that. Um, but if you just want to see butterflies like flying around, then you, it is very addicting. <laughs> um, then you would plant nectar plants. So um, things like coneflower, the Greg's mist flower, all of those type of things. If you would like to see butterflies and their life cycle, specifically monarchs, then you would need to plant milkweed. Um, plant probably like twice as much as you think you'll need because they eat it like I mean, we talked about it They grow 2,000 times bigger, right? So that's a lot of milkweed now other butterfly species are not that voracious meaning they don't eat as much as what um, I Don't teach April. I'm a mom. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I I'm a volunteer at the Houston Museum a couple of times a week. I'm not a teacher. I just and I, when I go and teach my butterfly classes, um, I teach all age groups. I've not, so far it's mostly, it's been elementary schools, um, but all grade, all grade levels. I could, I teach to, you know, adults and gardening groups. So honestly, any of my um, presentations could be for any ages. So this is just what I do. Um, so if you're wanting to see the life cycle of something other than a monarch, then your best bet is to Google whatever type of butterfly you want. Like here in Texas, I'm not sure, I know not everybody watching is from Texas and so I'll try to be a little more broad. Um, Gulf fritillary caterpillars or different kinds of fritillary caterpillars, they host on something called passion vine. So if you plant a passion vine, you'll get to see frit caterpillars. Um, what a lot of people don't realize and what I didn't know until I was older is they can only eat certain things. I know that when I was a kid, I would think, oh, look at this caterpillar, just throw some grass in there with it and and we'll call it good, but that, that does not work. Um, they have to eat specific things. Um, monarchs can only eat milkweed. There is a type of, I'll show you, um, I think Harmony said she wanted to see some other bugs, so I'm gonna show you guys this. These guys are called queens, and they are very closely related to monarchs, um, mostly because they host on milkweed, the same as monarchs do. It's like a cousin. I know you, got, you kids all have cousins, right? This is, this queen butterfly is a cousin to the monarch and they're called queens, but they are not all girls. There are boy queens and there are girl queens. So I'm gonna show you guys something really cool that they did. Oh, they're hiding from me, you guys. Oh my goodness, where'd my second one hide? Here's one, hang on. They're, oh, they're, they're making me work for it. They're down there at the bottom. So I'm gonna show you something funny. You see these black spots right here? That's called Frass. Frass rhymes with grass and is the name for caterpillar poop. I don't know why caterpillar poop needed its own name, but it does. So all those little black dots, those are from the caterpillars. Now these caterpillars are really cute. Now they're kind of small. I might have to show them to you in the zoom, but these are queen. Actually, let me do that. I'll show them to you in the zoom. These are queen caterpillars. 
and they, like I said, they're cousins to the monarchs. They eat milkweed, same as monarchs do. And they have these cute little polka dots. And you'll notice they have a little extra set of nubs in the middle. That's because they have three sets of filaments, not just two. Aren't they pretty? So they will turn into a butterfly that looks a whole lot like a monarch, but the coloring is a little bit different. They're like almost like a chocolate brown monarch. So these are really, really awesome. These are one of the other species that we raise and that's native here. So as far as bringing butterflies to your yard and wanting to see the life cycles, you really just need to kind of pick what species that you want to see and do all the research you can. Um, I mean, you can always ask me questions by all means too. Um, this, that's basically what we've done. We accidentally raised something called American Ladies last year and it's because there is a weed that grows in my yard. It is called Pennsylvania Everlasting. Um, anyone native to Texas might know that as cudweed. <laughs> Who knew that a butterfly ate something called cudweed, but here we are. So they hosted on cudweed and we ended up finding a couple dozen caterpillars just right in our yard because I failed to pull the weeds out of one section of my, my flower bed. So it really depends on what you wanna see. Another thing that's really fun to do with your kids is to look up butterflies that are native in your area. So for us, we would say like butterflies native to Southeast Texas. We actually have hundreds of butterflies that are native here. And nine times out of 10, unless you're living in like Antarctica, you probably have hundreds of butterflies that are native in your area too. So you just need to plant what they need. And it's always good to pair a host plant, which is what we call like, this is a, this is a small milkweed plant. This is a host plant. This is the plant that they have to lay their eggs on. Um, queens and monarchs. It's always a good idea to plant your host plants with some nectar plants because that they are so small. Harmony, Harmony, I want you to guess what instar you think that those are. So they have five instars. This first one is when they hatch and this last one is this big huge guy right here. Oh my gosh guys this caterpillar is wandering all over my my container. So this is a fifth instar and a first instar is teeny tiny like the numbers on a quarter so all of those things what instar do you think he is harmony you got to tell me i want you to guess for me it's a it's a mystery and i know what instar they are because well because i am a crazy butterfly person but because I, i've gotten to see them molt so um get back on your leaf and go make your chrysalis come on so you just need to find out just do a little bit of legwork but you always want to plant your host plants with some nectar plants because if you think about it being a mom is hard work, right? So you want these moms to come lay eggs in your yard. Well, you need to give them some snacks. <laughs> so it's the best way to describe it. So if you want butterflies in your yard to just fly through, plant all the flowers you can think of. If you want butterflies to hang out and leave you their eggs, then you gotta plant what they want. So it really just depends. Yes, that one is huge, mom. All right, Harmony, what's your guess? So this guy, is a fifth in star. Remember, in stars are like levels. He's a level five. He's like the one that we just watched pupate. He's gonna turn into a chrysalis really, really soon once he decides where he wants to go. And I'm only holding him because I know that my hands are clean. And because I'll wash my hands when I'm done. These guys are seriously so fun to watch. Like just watching them walk around is my favorite. And they're very curious. And see, right now, you can't see it, but I can feel it. He's got, he's putting silk all over my hand while he walks. Because he's very worried, not necessarily that I'm going to drop him, but that he could fall. Because he doesn't know where he's at. Along with being deaf, they also have pretty bad vision, actually. So, all right, Harmony, you got to tell me what your guess is. I can tell you if you just want me to tell you. <laughs> oh, this hair, y'all. <laughs> And I'm backwards to the camera, so every time I try to get it out of my face, I'm like, ah, oh, the wrong way. So, oh, see, oh, y'all probably can't see this. Hang on, let me see if I can get, hang on. We're going back to the, back to the zoom lens that I lost. Oh, here it is. I'm going to see if I can show y'all a piece of silk, because it's pretty incredible, honestly. Mm, let me know if y'all can see that. Hang on. Uh, well, I don't know. You might not be able to see that. Yeah. Mom guesses second in star. That's my mom, y'all. Yeah, I don't know if you can see the silk, but you might be able to see it coming off of his face. There we go. 
Oh, I, okay. I didn't know if y'all be able to see that strand. But coming off of his face are more strands of silk. Because he's just, that goofy thing that he does with his, with his face while he walks, that's silk. I have it all over my hands now. <laughs> I'm going to set him back down, though. Awesome! I'm glad y'all could see it. Isn't that crazy? It literally is just like a spider web. It does. It looks just like spider webs. That's what it is. So, mom is right. He's a second in star. Or the, the queens. They're second in stars. But, okay, how about I say this? Mom's half right. They are second in stars, but they're actually about to become third in stars. That's why they're kind of chilling out and not eating anything. But I do want to show you something kind of cool that they did to this plant. And then I think we will wrap this one and we will plan on some swallowtail classes later. Okay? How about that? Unless anybody has any other questions. So I want to show you something really cool. This is something that monarchs do. This one's obviously a queen, but monarchs do the same thing. You see how this leaf is like kind of bendy, bendy and it looks a little bit like broken right there? So all of these leaves, this is milkweed. Milkweed has a sap inside of it that is... Um, making sure I don't have a, okay. Just making sure there's not a caterpillar under there before I'm like messing with this leaf. So these veins right here have this milky sap in them and I can actually show you. So I'm gonna break this. Anytime you break off a leaf or you break open a leaf, oh, these might not show it very well because they're, well, on the end of there, it's white. You see that? That is milkweed. And that is the, or that, I'm sorry, that's milkweed sap. Um, that is the sap that comes out of it. That's why this plant is called milkweed because it has a milky sap inside of it. And it has um, toxins in it, and that is what makes monarchs taste bad, is that this sap, and you can actually see it a little bit better on this plant. See that white dot? That is sap. So, what would happen is if they just started munching on this leaf, the sap could pool and they could actually get stuck in it, um, it because it becomes very, very sticky as soon as it hits the air. So they would get stuck in it and they could get trapped in it or it could actually glue their mouth shut. They have something called mandibles where they, how they chew and it could glue their mouth shut. So what they do is they put a break in the leaf like this. And so now this part of the leaf that's very, very munched can be munched and it doesn't drip sap in their face or trap them. Now this part of the leaf can't. What happens is when they get a little bit bigger, um, Drian, give me one second. Um, when they get a little bit bigger, they'll actually break this entire leaf and just eat that whole leaf. But they do it so that the sap doesn't like drip into their face. Um, Drian, so what they do is they molt. So these guys, I'm gonna show you how they're just kind of sitting here. So they find a spot. I'm doing my I'm doing my makeup tutorial thing, guys, where they like hold their hand up so it'll focus. It works. So he's gonna sit here like this for um, about a day, day and a half. And what he's doing is he sits very still and it almost looks like they're praying because they put their little their little front feet together and they put their little head down. And what he's doing is he is waiting for a fluid that is being released underneath his skin. And what that fluid does is once he's the fluid has all released, he's able to split his skin open and walk forward right out of it. Because like when a human grows, our skin, our skin has elasticity. We have stretch to our skin. Um, but caterpillars do not. Their skin doesn't have that elasticity property to it. So they actually have to climb out of it in order to be able to get any bigger. So they have layers of skin under their other layers of skin. And then ultimately underneath all of that is the caterpillar pupa and the chrysalis that's underneath. So what they have to do is they actually have to split open their skin and walk out of it, which is pretty cool. And then they eat it. I don't know if you saw that part earlier. <laughs> most people, uh, most people are a little grossed out by that, but I'm telling you guys, I, so I have been doing this for five years. I have raised and released thousands of butterflies and no matter what I can be in the bathroom, washing my hands, doing whatever. And if I look over and I have one that's pupating or I have one that's emerging, I stop what I'm doing and I watch because it's amazing even after a thousand times seeing it. It's still amazing. All right, guys, I think we're gonna go on and wrap this one because I have been talking to y'all for an inordinate amount of time. Um, it does not give me a timer anymore, so I actually don't even know. That was a really big wasp. It's like, I can't even click. I can't even see how long it's been. But thank you guys for hanging out with me. I am going to plan on doing a swallowtail video. I have um, two types of swallowtails that I can talk to you guys about, but we can talk about swallowtails in general and how they're a little bit different from monarchs. But I'll do it in such a way that even if you didn't watch this video, 
still watch that video. So thank you, thank you guys for hanging out with me. I'm so excited. Oh, they do eat their skin, Harmony. So their skin has protein in it and they eat it because it's like a, a good snack. They also eat their eggs when they hatch. Oh my gosh, it's 1140. <gasps> I've been talking for a long time. You guys have the patience of saints. Thank you. <laughs> my normal classes, I'll just tell you, my normal classes are like 40 minutes to an hour. <laughs> but as you can tell, I can talk for a really long time and I love bugs and I love talking about bugs. All right, guys. So when we decide to do the swallowtail one, I'll give you guys the info on that. But until then, bye. Thank you for hanging out with me. Have a good one.